about a very important topic of class 12 that is sexual reproduction in the flowering plants. This topic will become in three successive videos so stay tuned. Okay, today's class we will discuss about how the main component for the sexual reproduction will be developed. That is the male and the female gamut. We all know that for performing sexual reproduction we need a male and a female gamete that will fuse to produce the embryo, right? Now, how it will produce in the case of the plants? So, let's start. We all know that the reproductive part of the plant is called the flower. Now, if we look at the structure of the flower, we can see that this is composed of four portions. From outside, we, if we can see, we can see that the green portion is the first one. This is called the calyx. This calyx is composed of so many leaf-like structure is called the sepals. That generally protects the flower from outside until it blooms. Next is called the corolla. That is made up of petals. This is the most colorful plant of the plant. Now, remaining two is very important for the reproduction. The first one of the remaining two is called the androsium. That means house of the male. So, is a male reproductive part. Okay. This is made up of lots and lots of stamens. Now, this stamen have two parts. One is called anther, another is called the filament. Next and the last portion is called the gynosium. Gyne means the female's house or the women's house. So, it is a women's part or the female part of the flower. That is made up of carpal. Now, there is maybe one carpal may present or several carpal may be present. If one carpal is there is called monocarpillary flower. If multiple carpels are there, that is called the multicarpillary flowers. Okay? So, a carpel made up of three portions. First portion is called the sigma. Second one is called the style. And the last portion is called the ovary. Now, if you look inside of the ovary, you can see that it is composed of ovule that contains the egg cell. Now, how this egg cell will form inside the ovule? Okay. So, generally in the ovule, we have a parent chymatose cell layer is called the new cellus that produces a special type of cell is called the archesporeal cell. Okay. So, let's start. What happens? If we look at the structure inside the ovary, we can see that there is a nucellus portion. This nucellus is a parenchymatous cell layer. Now, the nucellus is protected from outside by one to two multicellular layers is called the integument. You can see in the picture, right? Now, this integument leaves a pore in one of the pole. This pore is called the micropyle. Just opposite to the micropyle, what we are getting? The region is called the chalaza. Okay? So, this region is called the chalaza. So, what happened? The new cellular portion near micropyle will develop a special type of cell that is called archesporeal cell. Now these archesporeal cell will divide into two types of cells. One is called primary parietal Cell and another is called primary sporogenous cells. Now all these cells are diplomatic. 
chloritic in nature that means composed of two chromosome sets that is called two n right now this sporogenous cell will form our mother cell from where the egg cell will develop that is called megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell now we also call it as in mc there's a main portion from where our egg cell will develop this portion will help in the production of the remaining cell layer that will protect our egg okay now the mmc will perform meiosis so we all know that what is meiosis the meiosis is a reductional division that means here if two in number of that is diploid number of chromosome is there it will be reduced after meiosis so the mmc will perform meiosis and produce four reduce reduced chromosome set containing cells now these are called the mega spores mega spores now here we have to understand the structure inside what is happening so for say this is our this is our ovule portion what we can see in the picture also right now this is the embryo sac is the embryo sac where this all reaction is happen now megaspore mother cell will develop here then it will divide it into four successive cells that means four cell will be developed here so here we can see the four cell is developed now after meiosis now if we consider this region as micropyle and this region as chalaza so we can say that the this region cell will persist as because generally what happens among these four cells the cell which is present toward the chalaza will persist so here same will happen and rest of the three will be degenerated so they will not be present here okay so here we are getting a single cell this is called a megaspore cell now remaining will not be there okay this is a speciality of the egg cell development now what happens with this one megaspore mother cell this megaspore cell now perform mitosis now here they will go through three successive stages of the pre nuclear mitosis now what is a free nuclear mitosis generally we all know that the mitosis is composed of two portion one is called the karyokinesis and another is called the cytokinesis right so after karyokinesis double nucleus will develop that means two daughter nuclei develops and after cytokinesis each cell will have one nucleus that means the cell will broken down into two parts okay now here only karyokinesis will happen but not the cytokinesis so within the embryo sac now we are getting only the nucleus okay now what happens this megaspore will perform as i said three successive rounds of mitosis so how many nucleus will be there total eight nucleus will be formed right after after three rounds of mitosis eight nuclei will be formed now how eight nuclei form for that i'm writing here for your better understanding is that from one n number of mother we are getting two n number of daughter from here they will perform again the mitosis to produce next four daughter cell from these four daughter cell they also perform mitosis in the third round 
So ultimately what we get? Ultimately we get 8 number of nucleus, right? So here is our 8 number of nucleus, okay? 8 number of nucleus we are getting. Among these 8 nucleus, 3 will go towards the chalaza. And form a cell is called the antipodal cells. Okay. Here they will form antipodal cell. Okay. Now phase 2 will present at the center is called the polar nuclei. Now they let us fuse it to form central cell. Okay. They will form central cell. Remaining three of remaining three a cell will form the for our egg cell egg cell and two will be present just of two side of the egg cell that is called the synergic cell. These two are called synergic synergic cells. Okay, so this way our egg cell will develop that will be fertilized by our male cavity. Now these three conjointly called the egg apparatus that is placed near the micropyle So this is the end of our female reproductive part. Okay, now we will go to the male reproductive part that is how the male gamete will develop. So here is our male part. That is composed of anther and the filament, right? If you now transversely cut the anther region, what we will get? We get the inside portion that is look like this. As the anther is bilobed, in each lobe we are getting this round like structure is called the pollen sac, okay? So, total we are having four pollen sacs in each anther and we have this type of invagination, this type of invagination in both sides. This is called the dehiscent zone. Now, when a pollen become ripened, it will release from the anther by a particular region is called the dehiscent zone. Okay, here the membrane is thinner in compared to the other regions. Now what happens exactly? How he, within the pollen sac our pollen mother cell develops. As we all know the pollen sac contains a pollen mother cell from where our male gamut will ultimately develop. For that we have to understand the remaining structure which is present here. How it is developed. Okay. So, the outermost portion of this structure is called the epidermis. The epidermis have some specialized cells that will give rise to the archesporeal cell here also. Now, these archesporeal cell will divide to form two types of cell. One is called the parietal cell layer. Another is called the sporogenous cell layer. Now, this parietal cell layer will give rise to remaining three layers that is point out here also that is endothesium layer that is black in color, the middle layer green in color and the blue layer that is called the tapetum which helps in the nourishment of the pollen grains. Okay. So the rest part which is called the sporogenous cell layer will give rise to our pollen mother cell that are diploidic in nature. Okay. Now here also our pollen mother cell will go through a round of meiosis which is called a reductional division. So here four haploid cell will develop that is called the microsporangia. This is also called the immature pollen. Okay, But interestingly what happens here is that every four will participate in the formation of the male gamete. In the case of female gamete formation, what we can see that one will persist and remaining three will be degenerated. But here, no, this type of event happens. So all four participate in the reproduction process. Okay. 
So if I take one cell, what happens exactly within this cell? We can see now. Okay. So this is our single microsporangial cell. Okay. Now what happens when the matures? As I call that they are the immature pollens, right? So how they will mature? They will first go through a division of mitosis, a successive phase of the mitosis. What happens? In this case, two cells will develop. But here, one twist is present. What is that? The cytoplasm will be divided in between two nucleus unequally. So, one cell will be larger and another cell will be comparatively smaller. The larger cell is called the vegetative cell that will form the tube cell and the smaller cell which is spindle in shape is called the generative cell. That will later again divide to form two cells by the mitosis process. This is called the two male gametes. This will helps in the fertilization process. So we are getting two male gametes in this process. Okay. Now if we look at the outer region in the diaspora also here also we can see that they are composed of two protective layers. Now the outermost layer that is present here we can see in red color is called the exine that has sporopollenin which is a very hard component which protects the pollen from any type of stress conditions. Now the inner portion is called the intine, the inner muscle. What happens during the pollination, this intine will develop to outside and form the pollen tube, which we will discuss in our next video of pollination. So please stay tuned. If you like your, if you like my video, please subscribe our channel and share our video to your friends. Thank you. Have a nice day. Ta-da.